Nam Mô Sắc Cảm Ni Buddha So today we continue to discuss about dry speech So last time uh, we discussed about the uh, five keys uh, to dry speech that Buddha demise to consider. So he uh, mentioned that before we talk with someone else, we need to recognize whether uh, the thing that we discuss with others are true or not, whether they are helpful or beneficial or not, whether uh, we speak with our kindness or compassion or not, uh, whether that speech is uh, uh, gentle, pleasant, uh, and it's easy to hear or not, whether we speak at the right moment, at the right time or not. So these are the things we need to consider before we engage in any kind of conversation. So this uh, verbal expressions uh, can enhance our relationship, can solve uh, conflicts, uh, can communicate ourselves with others, family members, and other people surround us, or the one that we interact uh, with them directly. It could enhance our personal growth. Uh, it could mm, help us uh, to communicate with other people when we do business or when we work for someone else, uh, it can enhance the healthy image of ourselves. Uh, it could help our education or helping other people uh, to understand the message that we want to deliver. So that's why it's so important but that we need to consider what we try to say or try to express ourselves or try to convey the message. So that's why the Buddha say that before we speak, we need to consider whether the information that we convey to others or express ourselves, whether those informations are true or not. If it's true, we would convey, we would um, deliver, uh, we would express ourselves. If it's not true, it's better not to say, uh, because people would not trust us the next time, or even the next few times, if they find out that we deliver those uh, false messages. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that we consider whenever we say something else, whether that's helpful or beneficial. Uh, for example, when we talk uh, with the student, uh, we would need to recognize whether those information can be helpful for them to do homework, uh, to help them to gain more knowledge about the subject of studying, uh, and uh, when we talk, uh, we need to uh, recognize whether we talk without kindness, without compassion, without understandable thought or not. If we speak with the intention to harm them, uh, to slam them, and so forth, we need to um, resent ourselves uh, because uh, 
if we had intention uh, to help them uh, to understand the subject of study, uh, to understand some information that they may not um, study before, uh, to uh, recognize that uh, they need to learn and so forth with that kind of good intention. Um, it's better to talk. But if we uh, talk uh, with the intention uh, to harm them, uh, intention uh, to put them down and so forth, it's better not to talk. Because when we have those kind of intention, uh, and eventually uh, we will get back to us. And uh, that's why having the proper a good intention, a right intention is so important that we learned before. Uh, we need to uh, invoke our compassionate mind uh, to deliver the message that we want to share with others, no matter who they are. That's why it could help us uh, to have the pleasant word, uh, the nice word, uh, the respectful word, uh, the gentle word, and so forth, so that people can uh, enjoy uh, our conversation, okay, can enjoy uh, to listen to things that we share with them. And of course, uh, we need to speak at the right time, the right moment. And if we speak the wrong time, the wrong moment, they would not listen. Uh, again, for example, if we want to um, teach our students uh, according to the uh, learning subject, um, if uh, they need us to explain, it's better for us to uh, share those knowledge information if they don't need. Uh, but we insist on uh, explaining for them, it takes waste of time. Or if, um, they're so busy with their work, and we try to explain even with our good intention for them to learn or to understand. They take waste of time, they would not listen. Uh, so we have to wait for the right time, the right movement, uh, so that they can observe what we try to share with them. Uh, so those are the five uh, keys. Uh, for us to speak. Uh, so again, uh, the uh, verbal expression is the way that we express our feeling, whether it's good feeling, bad feeling, uh, pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, uh, like a dislike and so forth. But still, uh, when we uh, express our feeling uh, toward other people, uh, we need to um, use self appropriate words uh, to express ourselves. Otherwise, if we just mm, care about our feeling, but uh, we may not mm, mm, care much about others, so it may uh, create the emotionality, um, the conflict uh, between ourselves and others. Uh, because if we just mm, express, for example, uh, the uh, hatred feeling toward them. Uh, definitely, we would have a hard speech, uh, or unpleasant speech, and that's why they may not want to listen at all. Uh, so we need to uh, be selective for the words uh, of vocabulary uh, or the sense that we want to uh, talk with them. We want to express ourselves. If we use some hard speech, uh, like we want to attack them, uh, we want to bully them, uh, and so forth, they would not like to listen. And of course, even they still listen to those hard speech, uh, eventually uh, they uh, may uh, drag uh, probably in the uh, negative way. So we have to recognize us. And of course, when we um, 
express ourselves in any ways uh, that probably based upon our needs and uh, other people's needs. Uh, the needs is for the physical need, uh, for the safety, uh, protection, security, the love, the empathy, uh, the uh, entertainment, community, creativities, uh, purpose and learning and so forth. So those are the needs that um, we may express ourselves uh, that we want to fulfill those needs. For example, um, when we um, talk with uh, someone that we uh, like them or love them, we would express in the pleasant way, uh, in the lovely way. Uh, it, uh, so that they can recognize how much love you, we have with them. Uh, when we concern about the safety uh, of our house, our properties, uh, our driving and so forth, we would express ourselves that, oh, uh, this is uh, we concern uh, and so today. So if we uh, recognize us uh, in the conversation, um, they uh, need to fulfill uh, those needs. Mm, so we um, understand uh, what they want to express. So that's why in uh, uh, speaking, uh, we need to recognize whether uh, we want uh, to fulfill our needs we want to fulfill their needs or both or neither. So depend on the situations. And so no matter what, as much as we have the intention uh, not to harm them, uh, just uh, try to help them uh, to understand um, their needs. Uh, after the conversation, we would step out to help them or even uh, when we uh, want to express uh, our need uh, to others. Uh, we need to uh, say or uh, use some pleasant word that could be understandable, that could be uh, pleasant. And even when we make some kind of request uh, uh, based on our needs, uh, we need to use a pleasant word, not to the demand word. Uh, not to use some um, common words. Uh, for example, if we um, uh, ask uh, for help, we again, there's plenty of um, sentence. Uh, I mean, that um, respectful, uh, a polite sentence for us to express those requests uh, so that um, other people could understand and help us to appeal that needs. Uh, so the Buddha really um, concerned about how we express ourselves properly. That's why he gives some kind of teaching that we need to reflect uh, our speech uh, before, during, and after speaking. So he said that, um, Whenever uh, you want to uh, perform the verbal expression, you should reflect uh, on it. Um, this verbal expression I want to perform, uh, would it lead to self appreciation to the appreciation of others, or to both? Is this an unskillful verbal expression with the painful consequences, uh, the painful result? So again, the Buddha reminds us that before we speak, to see uh, whether those species or talks uh, would bring the harm or the self aggression or the harm or the aggression to others or both. If it's not, we would move forward to say, if not, if it does, we need to be careful. Uh, even uh, when we express ourselves 
whether it's unskillful or not, whether it's uh, may bring the painful consequence, uh, or consequence uh, that may be harmful for ourselves and others, we need to consider. So that's why next step, uh, the Buddha said that if a reflection, uh, you know that it would lead to say affliction, to the affliction of others, of both, uh, it would be an unskillful uh, verbal expression with painful consequences, a painful result, then any uh, verbal expression of that sort is absolutely unfit for you to do. And so that's, again, he reminds us that before we say something, we need to have the kind of reflection. If it's uh, harm us, if it's uh, harm others about, if it's unskillful, that means if we say something that might invoke uh, other people's anger or uh, sufferings, it's better not to say. Uh, again, the next one, would I say if, um, on the blessing, you know that it would not cause any affliction to yourself and others about. It would be a skillful work of expression with happy consequences and happy dessert. Then any work of expression of that sort is fit for you to do so. So it's so simple that we need to recognize us that if um, that kind of talks um, when the benefit for ourselves, others, or both, uh, that kind of speech, uh, 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 skillful, and that um, bring the happy result, uh, happy consequences, we can say. And so it's so simple and it's so logical uh, for us to follow. And, and so, uh, the Buddha say that um, uh, if uh, our verbal expression are unskillful uh, with uh, uh, painful consequences, painful results, uh, if uh, what we perform uh, our verbal expression, uh, we need to recognize that it may lead to self affliction, uh, to the affliction of others or to both. Uh, we need to give up that kind of speech, that kind of talk, uh, that kind of verbal expression uh, while we talking. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if we reflect that um, um, we speak, uh, I express ourselves uh, that would not um, be considered as a aggression or to bring the affliction to others about, or is this is skillful verbal expression uh, with the happy uh, consequences or happy result, we would move forward to say. Uh, so that is so obvious for us. So when we communicate with other people before and during uh, the time that we uh, share the knowledge or shared information with other people. We need to have the kind of contemplation, or have that kind of uh, reflections um, as much as uh, they are uh, uh, non cell uh, affliction, or as much well as they don't uh, harm others about. Uh, we can move forward to say. Uh, uh, or even while we talking, we need to uh, contemplate or make that type of reflection. Uh, so uh, again, with the mindfulness practice, we would know what we try to express ourselves verbally uh, so that we can choose uh, the senses of vocabularies uh, to express ourselves in the proper way. So the next one, uh, the Buddha reminds us that having performed a verbal uh, expression, you should reflect on this. If uh, you know that it led to self-affliction, the affliction of others or to both, 
it was an unskillful verbal expression with painful consequences, with a painful result, and so forth, then you should contest it, review it, lay it open to a teacher or a knowledgeable companions in the holy life. So this is the Buddha remind us, especially um, among the monastic communities, of monks and nuns. If we somehow recognize that we have said something that may be offended, uh, that may bring the harm to others, uh, that may um, bring the uh, painful, uh, unhappy consequences to others, uh, we should um, confess uh, to um, uh, the knowledgeable uh, friends, companions, or teacher, so that um, they would um, help us uh, um, to uh, remind us that we would not do any more, or even when we review or uh, depend for those uh, mistakes, uh, hopefully next time we would not repeat those offenses again. So that's the purpose. That's why the next one, the Buddha said that having confesses, uh, you should exercise uh, to restrain uh, them in the future. Uh, so again, with that kind of confession, with that kind of dependence, uh, we would um, try to remember to restrain ourselves from saying those uh, speeches uh, that may be harmful, that may be um, mm, uh, unskillful, um, that may be uh, painful uh, to ourselves and others. Uh, again, the next one would I say that, but if on the reflection, you know that it did not lead to ablation to yourself and others about uh, it was a skillful uh, verbal expression with happy consequences, happy result, and then you should stay mentally refreshed and joyful uh, training days and night in skillful mental qualities. So as much as we recognize, oh, we have delivered, expressed ourselves in the past the way, uh, in the skillful way, uh, in the um, uh, blessing way, uh, and it would be helpful for others and ourselves. So we would be joyful uh, and we would um, continue uh, to deliver that kind of message or uh, having the expression uh, again. So it's very logical. Uh, that's why the Buddha reminds us that before, during, and after our speech, uh, we need to have that kind of um, um, reaction or contemplation. Again, before we say something else, we need to recognize uh, if uh, our verbal expression brings any effect for ourselves and others or not, um, and while we talk with other people too, we need to have that kind of um, reflection uh, whether we deliver that type of speech, uh, verbal expression that could bring the benefit for us and others or after that. So with that kind of, of contemplations and, this, and reflection, it will be helpful for us uh, to recognize uh, what kind of um, verbal expressions that we deliver or share with other people, whether we uh, express our feeling or whether we point out our needs uh, or others as much as they are pleasant, as much as they are beneficial, um, definitely uh, we would need to share with others now and the future. Mm. So again, that's so important uh, for us to uh, recognize. So in essence, uh, the Buddha reminds us that we need to avoid uh, some kind of uh, speech or talk uh, that uh, may, not, 
the fruitful or beneficial, especially uh, the gossip uh, about um, other people, uh, about the food, the clothes, the furniture, uh, the sales, the relatives, um, other people in town, in village, uh, in the community, and so forth. Uh, as much uh, we uh, recognize uh, those guys gossiping uh, are not beneficial. We need to stop. We need to abstain from talking about those topics that may not be beneficial for us. So of course uh, we learned before. Um, as human, we love um, gossiping. Uh, we like to talk something about others, uh, especially in politics. Uh, so. It's easy for us to have that type of um, tendency uh, to talk about uh, some politicians, the way they talk, the way they act, uh, the way they serve uh, communities, or uh, even the way they um, um, mm, uh, come in, uh, uh, mm, uh, leads uh, the communities to do some work. So again, as a Buddhist, uh, we need to restrain uh, from saying those guys gossiping. Uh, if um, it is useless, if it um, doesn't bring in the kind of benefit for ourselves and others, it's better for us to restrain instead of expressing um, some kind of uh, uh, fake news, uh, some and two full informations. So that's why the Buddha uh, reminds us that we need to uh, restrain ourselves from those kind of gossiping. And the next one, the Buddha reminds us that um, uh, we need to uh, uh, have um, reflections uh, when we uh, uh, talk with other people. Uh, we need to is say in the proper way uh, instead of um, since we need to express first but um, we somehow explain later uh, or we try to uh, convince other people or we try to uh, express uh, ourselves uh, to other people that oh uh, we know that kind of subject and you don't know uh, the subject, adoption, and so forth. That means uh, we try to uh, be arrogant uh, with the subject that we want to share and put down other people. So again, um, that's not the thing that the Buddha uh, recommends us to do. So that's why he said that we need to abstain from those debates, debate that uh, may uh, uh, boost up our ego uh, and in the meantime uh, to um, uh, stand in other people. Uh, so that's why uh, the Buddha said that's not fruitful, um, that is not mm, beneficial debate. Our debate is in that we want to share our information and knowledge with other people and in the meantime we need to listen to them. Uh, to recognize or understand their uh, um, views uh, so that we can hold uh, the healthy, uh, uh, understandable conversation. Uh, and on the top of that, uh, the Buddha say that um, whenever we hold any kind of conversation, uh, we need to recognize whether it's late uh, to uh, our spiritual practice uh, is helpful for our higher knowledge or uh, enlightenment to uh, be happy, be peaceful. Uh, or if we hold any kind of conversation, uh, whether it's uh, uh, be helpful for us uh, to recognize the suffering that we have, to recognize um, the arising of suffering, the cause of suffering, 
uh, the way how to end the sufferings. Uh, we need to uh, have that reflection before um, we hold any kind of um, conversation as a, um, a monastic. Of course, uh, for lay Buddhists, uh, of, um, other people, they can hold any kind of conversation that they like to, but uh, for the monastic communities, the monks and nuns, uh, the Buddha advised us that we can hold the conversation that um, focus mainly to our spiritual inclinations, our developments, not to say something or this is something that's uh, not beneficial for our spiritual path. For example, um, there's no need for us to talk about politics. Um, there's no need for us to talk about um, this business uh, because that's not um, our expertise. Yeah, for business people, yeah, they would discuss uh, among themselves about how uh, they do business successfully, whether they um, uh, run a store, a company, uh, and so forth, or whether they um, do business with others. Yeah, definitely, there's a uh, thing that's more appropriate for them uh, to discuss or to hold conversation. Uh, and other people, they may hold conversation about their relationship, uh, how they run for the office and so forth. Again, um, that's their choice. But um, especially in uh, the um, monastic communities, uh, Buddha advises us that when we talk with our friends, when we talk with uh, other people, when we talk with um, someone else, it's better to talk about uh, the spiritualities, about how uh, we uh, gain um, concentrations, uh, how we learn the sutra, uh, how we uh, calm our mind, and how we could help other people. It's more fruitful uh, or more religious uh, among ourselves. Otherwise, again, as a Buddhist monk, we're not supposed to discuss much about politics and mess. Some uh, things that may occur that mm, affect to the Buddhist mm, communities. Uh, so again, uh, the Buddha advises that whichever things we do, whether it's just in the spiritual path, or whether in business, or politics, or so forth, we need to uh, recognize ourselves and hold the conversation accordingly, otherwise just waste of time. Um, and um, again, uh, the Buddha reminds uh, our um, Buddhist monastic um, communities that uh, when we hold the conversations, there's 10 topics uh, that is more appropriate for us to discuss, uh, to talk with other people. Uh, the first one is the talk on modesty. That means if we want to talk or hold any conversation with other people, uh, we need to have that reflection uh, that uh, we uh, hold a talk that relates to uh, humbleness, uh, modesty. Uh, for example, we uh, talk with each other, encourage each other to be humble. Uh, um, that is one of the virtue um, that we we need to uh, encourage or remind each other to live with instead of boosting ourselves and our ego in any kind of situation. For example, uh, if we uh, learn some sort of sutra, yes, uh, we would have that type of knowledge, but uh, when we share those knowledge with other people, we have to be humble. Um, that's why, for example, in the um, 42 session sutra, uh, the Buddha said that we need to be careful not to look up on uh, the beginners, uh, because uh, uh, who knows? Even they could uh, 
learn Buddhism or get work on the spiritual path, um, they may learn quicker or uh, work faster than us. We don't know. So, of course, uh, if we uh, are disciples, are the students, we need to discuss uh, our teachers, our seniors, uh, due to their knowledge and practice uh, of Buddhism. So anyway, in any situations, we need to remain humble. So that is that what kind of speech that the Buddha says is wholesome, that beneficial. And the next one is on containment. That means when we talk, we talk in uh, the way that uh, um, not uh, stimulate uh, the breach um, or the hatred. Uh, we get um, hold a conversation about how peaceful we are, how calm we are, and not um, how angry we are, and so forth. Uh, when we hold a conversation, uh, they would know that uh, we would not um, uh, uh, show uh, our craving uh, towards certain things. We would um, uh, remind ourselves and others that uh, everything is, is enough. Uh, we would not need to cry or desire anything uh, that um, not necessary. Uh, for example, uh, when we eat in, right? Uh, as um, you know, they are uh, eatable uh, foods we can consume and we would not um, tell other people, oh, this kind of food is, is not um, um, my favor, so I would not um, consume and so forth. And when we talk, uh, we need to uh, talk about seclusion, that the place when we practice meditation, uh, so that um, is so uh, beneficial for ourselves and others, to encourage ourselves and others to do the practice. And when we talk, and would I say that we need to talk in a clear way, uh, not in confused way, uh, so that um, our listener could understand uh, whichever things that we try to deliver. Mm. And when we talk, um, would I say the next virtue is that um, on the encouragement, uh, for example, uh, for our junior monk, uh, for lay Buddhists, when we see them, uh, we need to uh, encourage them uh, to do the practice, uh, to do meditation, uh, to recite sutra, the mantra, and so forth. Uh, that is the way we um, talk a whole conversation with other people. When we see them, especially the lay people, we could um, ask them, how is your practice of meditation? How long do you practice um, chanting, uh, sutra, a mantra, and so forth? Um, so again, that the next, a uh, wholesome topic that's on virtue, on any kind of virtue, whether it's uh, related to uh, the generosity, related to uh, the patient, and so forth. And we could hold the kind of conversation, uh, that kind of talk to other people, or we can talk about concentration, uh, how um, uh, we uh, focus our mind, uh, in studying, uh, in deciding the sutra, and so forth. We can hold the talk about insight, or uh, the uh, vipassana, or the mindfulness practice uh, that um, we're working on, or other people. We try to encourage, especially lay people, uh, to hold that kind of um, conversation uh, to remind or share our experience of uh, doing meditation or uh, learning the sutra mm. and uh, on the um, detachment. Uh, so that's uh, 
in apices of uh, um, the uh, worldly concern that when we talk, okay, just um, uh, let's go up um, things, let's go up your anger, let's go up your anxiety, get, let's go up your um, worry, you might be more peaceful. Uh, or when we talk, we talk about uh, the Buddhist knowledge, about the visions of our detachment, uh, of the goal, why we practice meditation, uh, why we uh, chanting the sutra, uh, chanting uh, the mantra, and so forth. So the Buddha said, those are the 10 wholesome topics that we can hold uh, with other people. And that's why the Buddha said that if you were engaged uh, in, uh, repeatedly in those 10 topic conversation, you uh, should um, decide or uh, you and outshine others uh, like the sun and the moon, uh, so mighty and so powerful. Um, so that is the 10 virtue, uh, the 10 uh, things that we uh, need to hold conversation uh, with other people, especially if we are monastics. Uh, and definitely if um, the lay people, they can uh, follow that kind of uh, 10 virtue too. And so the next thing uh, the Buddha reminds us that if we are senior, if we are teachers, uh, if we are the leaders, uh, when we see our junior, our students, or even our children make some mistake, uh, we need to reconsider how we admonish uh, them. Uh, so that uh, they could be uh, a good person again, so that they would not make those mistakes again. So the Buddha said that before we uh, admonish uh, someone else, we need to investigate, we need to have contemplations and reflections uh, you know, on five conditions uh, to see whether it's more appropriate uh, for us or not to uh, more, uh, manage um, those people who make a mistake. So the first one, uh, we're gonna say that we need to uh, recognize, uh, reflect uh, whether um, uh, we practice uh, purity in our body, our speech, uh, our thought or not. If we have the kind of uh, purity, and that's okay for us to uh, admonish uh, out of a mistake. That's number one. Number two, uh, uh, we need to contemplate or reflect that uh, whether we practice uh, uh, the purity um, in our speech, whether it's our speech uh, uh, flow less or untended. Uh, and then number three, uh, when we talk, whether we, uh, based on our goodwill, based upon our uh, compassion, uh, based upon uh, our uh, understandable uh, thought or not. So the first three things that relate to our speech, uh, to our body, uh, to our thought. So as much as they're pure, um, as much as they don't have any kind of um, fault, as much as their compassion, uh, we can uh, admonish others. Uh, so those are the first three conditions. Uh, the number four is says, um, we need to contemplate and reflect ourselves whether we have enough information uh, about those uh, people, mistake, uh, so if uh, uh, we recognize that um, they have that type of mistake, uh, we have enough um, evidence about those mistakes, so we could um, um, demand them uh, not to commit again. Uh, so uh, the last one that the Buddha uh, advises that um, uh, when we 
I'm honest, uh, those people who have made mistakes, uh, we need to uh, recognize that um, we want them to change for better, uh, not to uh, uh, harm them, not to look down upon them, not to make them become embarrassed in front of other people. Uh, uh, and we uh, emotionalize them so that they can continue uh, to live in the uh, uh, communities uh, to practice the spiritual path, um, not mm, uh, try to reveal mm, their um, mistake of faults uh, to other people so that they would be embarrassed and give up the practice. Mm, so again, uh, with those um, uh, attitudes, it's better for us to uh, have so that uh, we can help other people to change uh, their mistake since time is up. Uh, let me uh, stop here today and next time I will continue uh, to discuss and share about uh, the Buddha teaching based on this uh, right speech. Topic. Uh, Namo Shakyamuni Buddha.